Hi, hi, hi. It's Sweaty Jen back. Today's video is going to be tips on how to manage hyperhidrosis. So the tips I'm talking about today are more so things that I use to cope with sweating that are not medications or surgeries, things of that nature. So a lot of these tips I just found through the years of living with excessive sweating and I hope some of these tips can help you. If you have any tips on how to manage your hyperhidrosis, please leave your tips down in the comments below because they might help me and they might help other people looking for this information. So, first tip, and these are in like no particular order, um, they're all good. The first tip though is fans. So something that I kind of learned more into my adult life was when I start sweating if I hold my hands or my feet or whatever in front of fans it generally like the air circulation kind of minimizes the sweating a lot uh, to the point where sometimes it'll stop it and I just need to wait for it to dry off I don't know why but having air blowing constantly really dries stuff out Sometimes too I'll like take a hair dryer if it's cold and I'll just kind of dry myself off like I'll dry my pit stains <laughs> with my hair dryer. So there's that. Fans, blow dryers, air dryers, whatever seems to help. The other tip is when you go out, so let's say you're going to work or you're going to an event, you're going to be out of the house for a while. Bring extra socks, an extra shirt, extra underwear, whatever you kind of need that gets damp pretty easily. I found just sticking like an extra pair of ankle socks in my purse gave me peace of mind to know, okay, if I sweat through this current pair of socks, I have an extra pair that's dry that I can change into. Um, same with shirts. It's a little less realistic to always have a shirt in your purse, but if you're able to, like if you go to work, maybe on your lunch break, if you tend to like sweat through your shirt before your lunch break, it, it would be a comfort to have an extra shirt to change into. And who cares if people think you're a little bit weird for changing shirts? We have to do what we have to do to be comfortable, you know? Um, and then lastly, like underwear and stuff like that, um, if you're staying over at somebody's house, obviously it's great to bring a change of clothes, but also like somebody like myself who suffers from the occasional groin sweating, it's nice to be able to change into a fresh pair of underwear. Um, the next thing is more so for when you're at home. I found I like to just have a towel or a washcloth or some kind of terry cloth fabric that's really good at absorbing water nearby. For some reason, sometimes I'll just start sweating when I'm watching TV and being able to kind of like dry myself as the sweat's coming out is just nice and convenient and it makes me feel a little bit less miserable. Uh, for those of us who write or you're in school and you have to write, I find wearing long sleeves or having, so like for long sleeves, I generally always have long sleeves even in the summertime. I'll have like some kind of light shawl type thing to throw over myself, but I will take like my sleeve and I'll pull it down. And then I'll write like so that this part of my hand is um, isn't like leaving wet spots on paper or anything so that's one thing another good tip I found for those of us who suffer from groin sweat is tying a sweatshirt around your waist so let me grab a sweatshirt There's just one that I have. Obviously, like, I'd recommend a little bit thinner of a sweatshirt than this one. But you just take the sleeves. This is totally, like, a 90s fashion. But, like, it'll cover the back of you. And then when you sit down, 
it's like an extra layer to keep like that condensation or the sweat forming on the chair and then it's always nice to have like an extra layer to throw on if you need it next tip extra shoes don't wear the same shoes twice in a row so I find this to be especially true if you're in school, sports, working, if you're out of the house for long periods of time and wearing shoes. It, it's not the most cost effective solution to have to buy two pairs of shoes, but letting your shoes kind of have that 24 hour window where there's no feet in them, letting them dry out, I find it's much more comfortable to wear dry shoes. And I have been in predicaments where I'm wearing shoes that are damp from the previous day especially when I was working my shoes I, I'd sweat through them because they were like leather oxford shoes so the shoe would get extremely wet and it would start to smell and then the next day it was like my only pair of work shoes so I'd put those same shoes and sometimes they would still be damp from the previous day and that was just not a good way to start the day or keep my feet dry through the day when you're already putting them into a wet environment. It's uncomfortable. Next is, I noticed, so as a girl, I don't know if it's the same for boys, but as a girl, I generally don't wash my hair every day. As you can see, it's pretty long. It's pretty thick. Washing it every day would be really tiring so I'll wash it like every three days or four days and I'll use some dry shampoo at the roots if I need to if it's getting a little greasy obviously brush it out every day distribute the oils from your scalp but so I notice though when I haven't showered in two or three days my sweating will get worse and sometimes it's just as simple as hopping into a warm shower wash your body off, get like whatever sweat, dirt, and grime has built up and just wash your body and sometimes I'll be like a puddle. I'll be sweating like crazy and I'll hop into the shower and when I get out, I feel like brand new. My sweating's way less intense. It's so much um, easier to cope with. So that's another good tip. And um, just be careful about stripping your body's natural oils. I wouldn't recommend showering like all day long with hot water because your skin will get dry really fast. Um, but I do understand it's discomforting to put lotion on after a shower. I find when I put like lotions on my hands, sometimes they start sweating profusely. I do have the experience of using like body oils and those for some reason seem not to trigger my sweat as much. Another one, this is more for the ladies, but maybe there's some boys out there who this tip could help. That is using mittens while straightening or curling your hair. So my hair is naturally quite frizzy and wavy, but I straighten it or I blow dry it. And if my hands are too sweaty, you know, like let's say you're straightening your hair and then you touch it with your wet hand, it's going to undo everything you just did because when the hair gets wet, it loses the shape that you just put into it. So putting on like a nice light pair of mittens just to keep your hair from getting re-wet from your hands or if you don't have mittens, <laughs> I used to do this a lot when I was younger and People always made fun of me because they would see me do it, but I would just take like a literal sock and use my sock as like a means to like holding the hair. So that'll be, it, it'll make your hair easier to style and maybe make you feel less kind of like you're ruining your progress as you go. What is next? I have a little list here. Handshakes. I see this a lot on the subreddit about handshakes and I wish there was like some amazing tip I could give on um I wish there was some kind of amazing tip I could give for shaking hands and how to get 
the sweat off in time. I find shaking hands is usually something that happens during already very nerve-wracking situations like job interviews or meeting a bunch of new people at your company, meeting new people in general. And of course then we, we're already a little nervous and probably sweating and then we have to shake hands with somebody and then they notice our sweat and then we get more anxious. So my tip really is just work on some stress relief techniques and work on just making yourself less anxious in general in those situations. I know that's easier said than done, but if you're going into a job interview and you know you're going to have to meet somebody, I would say bring some, like bring a paper towel in your pocket that you can kind of like dry your hand off continuously with maybe and then obviously maybe wear some darker colored pants so that just before you go to shake their hand subtly like give your pants a nice hard rub with your sweaty hand rub that sweat off as much as you can and go in for that handshake as quick as possible before the sweat comes back <laughs> and all I can say is, you know what, it's you, your hand's sweaty, my hand's been sweaty during the same situation. They'll get over it and we'll get over it and move on, so try not to let it, you know, get your spirits down too much or worry too much about it. I find even people without excessive sweating or hyperhidrosis, they tend to get kind of clammy during situations that they're nervous for so uh, at worst they'll think oh they're really nervous or whatever uh, a lot of people get sweaty clammy hands when they're nervous uh, so in terms of keeping the anxiety and nerves at bay i've seen some people online say man like that hyperhidrosis is purely a mental problem and i just it's so idiotic. It's not purely a mental problem, but I have found that learning how to like manage your emotions, your strong negative emotions like anxiety, nervousness, anger, stuff like that, learning how to deal with those feelings and cope with them and stay calm during them does help reduce sweating. So like a story this could be pertinent to is last night when I was at work there was a lot of new people and everybody was talking to me and I started to get a little antsy and nervous and I did I started sweating so much and I kept wiping my hands on my pants but I found if I had just like stayed calm and taken a few deep breaths maybe like went and took some time to myself to chill that would have helped probably keep the sweating down a little bit more. So deep breathing, meditation, yoga, any of those stereotypical stress relief exercises is, you know, give them a try and see what happens. It can't hurt. Another one that I don't do that great, but I've heard great things about is avoiding caffeine, avoiding spicy food, and avoiding alcohol. So caffeine raises your blood pressure and it's a hot drink and that can make your nervous system start sweating. So avoiding caffeine, I found that caffeine or no caffeine, hot drink or no hot drink, it doesn't really have an effect on me as far as I know but I love coffee that's like something that I feel I couldn't give up right now maybe one day but right now my love of coffee is just too strong but I have tried to limit it like I used to be a big coffee drinker diet coke tea through the whole day now I try to be more mindful and just have like my morning coffee and sometimes in the afternoon I'll have another caffeinated drink maybe like coca-cola or another coffee or a tea um but I used to go way harder on the caffeine so just be mindful of your caffeine intake if you're the type of person who could give up caffeine or let's say you love coke they sell caffeine free coke if you're the type of person who'd be willing to go caffeine-free, I mean, more power to you. I feel like that couldn't hurt in t 
terms of hyperhidrosis, it could only help. So if you do give that a try, let me know if that really does help a lot. Um, the spicy food, so things like curry and hot peppers and all those delicious spicy foods, those also increase your body's core temperature, which can in turn lead to sweating. And then they also say to avoid alcohol because alcohol can lead to sweating. And I know a lot of people who suffer from alcoholism actually develop secondary hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweating brought on by like an external factor like alcohol abuse or medications they're taking, etc. Um, but they are still suffering from hyperhidrosis nonetheless. Um, so if you're drinking alcohol and sweating, that's something you might want to consider quitting. It might help your sweating issue. Next, this is a tip I see a lot but that I find Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I figure I'll share it because everybody who suffers from this is different and different things work for different people. So this tip is wearing lighter fabrics. So this fabric I'd say is pretty light, um, but also like silky fabrics and really lightweight materials that don't trap your body heat in too much can be beneficial in keeping your core temperature down which will lead to less sweating. Also, um, this is just my personal tip in regards to clothes. I find I feel more comfortable like in a social setting wearing kind of a thicker sweater or having a second sweater on top, more layers, even though it sounds counterproductive in terms of sweating, you would think, oh, the less layers, the less heat being trapped in, the better. But for me, I just feel like comfortable because I guess I know if I do start sweating, like my pit stains aren't gonna show through. And I don't know, for me, like thicker materials seem to make me sweat less. Unless I'm somewhere really hot, then anybody's gonna be sweating in like a super thick knit sweater. And last but not least, which I actually need right now, and this tip is drink more water. I know in my glycopyrrolate video I stress this like 12 times, probably too much, but honestly that is one of the best tips that I never appreciated enough as a teenager or a kid is drinking plenty of water. So one of the main symptoms that can come about, come about from dehydration is just general irritability. And those of us who are sweating all day long and suffer from hyperhidrosis, we're going to get dehydrated way quicker than the average person. Our body is expelling so much fluid, not only through our sweat, but also through our urine. We're just expelling fluid non-stop eventually that leads to dehydration and then we get more crabby because not only are we a sweating puddle and we feel sticky and we're wet and uncomfortable but then we're dehydrated as well so then we're crabby because we're also dehydrated and it just kind of like they play off of each other and make things seem way worse than they really are so drink lots of water. Always have a water handy. If you're the type of girl who's like always on the go and you don't have a big bag to carry things in, they sell those like super mini water bottles. Bring one of those with you and refill it. Um, and then also in sweat, we're losing precious electrolytes like sodium and potassium. So sometimes, every so often, I'll just drink a Gatorade. And I find... I don't like overdoing the Gatorade, but every so often if I'm feeling like a little muscle crampy or I'm drinking tons of water but I'm still not feeling like I'm drinking lots of water but I'm still feeling super thirsty, I notice if I drink a Gatorade or some other electrolyte rich drink Sometimes that feeling gets diminished and it's less severe. So, that. And then my last tip really is 
try to manage those feelings, the negative feelings that come along with hyperhidrosis, like isolation, depression, anxiety. If you have somebody close to you who you feel comfortable with, talk to them about how hard it is to deal with it. Explain to them things they could do or that you need to do to make yourself feel more comfortable. Sometimes people will surprise you and really understand and be accepting of you. And if they don't accept you or they make fun of you for whatever reason, you know, maybe they're not a true friend or somebody who you really want in your life anyway. But I guess when you share with the people around you, they might not completely get it, but at least they're aware of something that you're struggling with and certain things might click in their mind like, oh, that's why they do X, Y, or Z, or that's why I notice they don't want to high five me all the time. You know, it just kind of brings more awareness to your life of people understanding who you are and also it teaches them that there's people like us out there and they might know somebody who also struggles and they might really understand and make you feel better. So that's my tips. I might make another tip video if I think of some more that I forgot, which I'm sure I did. Um, I'll make a part two. Otherwise, leave your tips, like I said, down in the comments. I'd love to read some of them. Even if it's just saying, oh, I do, I do the tip of bringing my socks, an extra pair of socks in my purse, let me know. Please like this video and hit the subscribe button. I'm going to try to post a new video every day, at least for a month, and see how that goes. Also, I want to try some more live streaming. It probably won't be talking about sweating or anything, but I'd love to just have you there with me talking if you're interested. So, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next time, and I appreciate such the kindness that I received so far on here. It's been really comforting to know there's other people who aren't judging me. I, I wasn't expecting it. So have a good day. Bye.